In this video, we're gonna talk about all the tips and strategies that you need to stay consistent on YouTube. We'll talk about removing resistance, using pockets of time, and building systems all to help you keep uploading videos on a regular basis to grow your channel and monetize your side hustle. Now this video is packed full of value, so stay with me till the end because I did save the best for last. And if we're just meeting, my name is Woody and this is Grown Up Pains where we talk about all things business and personal growth. This video is just one in a series that we're making about how to get started on YouTube, how to monetize it as a side hustle, and how to get your first 1,000 subscribers. So if that sounds like something that you are into, please give that subscribe button a snap so that you can catch future videos. So the first thing I wanna talk about is removing resistance and we're gonna work backwards. Pause the video right now and ask yourself what's stopping you from taking the next step or what is the next step for you? Now, if you're really just starting out and you haven't even made or set up your YouTube channel yet, we do have a video for that and we'll link to it in the description below. And if you're not sure how to edit, believe me, you can do everything on your phone these days. I like to use CapCut and that's a video that we plan to make in the future as well. Now, if the idea of setting everything up to get ready to film is like just overwhelming and it's gonna take too long, get everything set up and leave it set up so that when you are ready and feeling like inspired to film, you can just sit down, turn on the light and hit record on the camera and everything is just ready to go. Is your problem that you are not sure what you wanna talk about in your videos? Now we did just make a video on how to brainstorm endless content ideas for your YouTube channel and that same principle can be applied to literally any form of social media that you're trying to grow on and that's another video that we'll link to down in the description. Or maybe you're just stuck on figuring out your niche. You're not sure who your audience is or who exactly you're catering your content to. We have a video for that as well. Again, it'll be linked in the description. Now, I'm sure there are a hundred other possible reasons why you haven't started filming that next video. What is holding you back? I wanna know in the comments and if it's something that we can help you with, I wanna make a video about it. So please let me know in the comments so that we can make that for you. Now, the next thing that I wanna talk about is utilizing pockets of time. People like to say that we all have the same 24 hours in a day and yeah, that's true, but how you use them can infinitely increase your leverage when you're trying to do something like grow a YouTube channel or grow a business. Everybody has a little downtime here and there throughout the day and if you have the systems in place to be able to use those pockets of time effectively, you really can get a leg up for when you need a dedicated block of time for something like actually filming a video. So what kinds of things can we do in those pockets of time? We can work on scripts, we can edit thumbnails. You can edit videos, if not on your computer, on your phone using something like CapCut or another video editor. Or you could listen to a podcast or audiobook that's going to inspire you with an idea for your next video. And maybe you need to brush up on a skill and you can just look up a YouTube video that's gonna teach you exactly how to do that thing. So let's talk about when these pockets of time occur. When are they available to you and how can you plug things into them? Literally my favorite time to work on things is first thing in the morning. If you can get up just an extra 30 minutes or an hour earlier than typical, uh, maybe you know while the world is still quiet and before your partner or spouse has woken up, you can get over to the computer and start scripting out some bullet points for a, a script idea. Or maybe grab your journal and write a few things down. You could spend a little time clarifying the direction or your niche or what kind of content that you want to create. Just spend a little time brainstorming. First thing in the morning before you're encumbered by you know emails for work or getting out the door before you've had to make breakfast, you can just take a moment and spend some time gaining clarity for yourself. Now, if you can get a good chunk of time in the morning, I think it's really great to get some of these ideas out before you go on to your busy day. But once you've gone into the day, look for those little moments where you might have five or 10 or 15 minutes where you can actually work on something. One of my go-to moves for these small pockets of time during the day is just to pull up Google Docs and maybe look at the last thing that I was working on and see if I can add a few more lines to it. Uh, might have been jotting down some bullet points for a script or might have been um, in the process of brainstorming different content ideas and just kind of filling out like what those possibilities might be. Uh, maybe you're working on writing a blog post or something that's going to be in an email newsletter or a list like that. Anything that you can spend time jotting down in your spare time can be built upon, you know, five minutes here, 10 minutes there, 15 minutes there. You get a good chunk of time in the morning, maybe a good chunk of time in the evening but you can always pick that back up because you have Google Docs synced to your phone and your computer and your tablet or whatever it is that you're using. Now, when we get home from work in the evening, it's often our default mode to just start to unwind or do the things that we have to do. It might be making dinner for your family or it might be plopping down on the couch and turning on the TV and starting to watch something on Netflix just to kind of let your mind relax and unwind. But 
before you do any of those things, well, don't skip feeding your family, but if you get a pocket of time before you do something that's totally unproductive, can you commit to maybe doing just five or 10 or 15 minutes of something that's working on your channel? And create a reward system for this. If you set the goal to actually work on something for five minutes, then set a timer for that. And when that timer goes off, you actually have the choice of continuing to do the work or rewarding yourself with a downtime activity like watching TV. And if you're getting any value out of this video, please do me a favor and click the like button because it gets the algorithm all up in a tizzy or so they say. Now, moving on, let's talk about building some systems. And if you're wondering what kind of systems that you actually need, you need a system for everything. It's the only way that you are going to be able to stay consistent when you're making videos on YouTube over a long period of time. Now, when I say that you need a system for everything, I'm talking about script writing, thumbnails, editing, title, descriptions, keywords, literally everything that you might need to figure out start to finish for one video. If you're gonna have to do it over and over and over and over, why not systemize it? When it comes to writing a script, I love to start with a template. And again, you can build out this template in Google Docs or Apple Notes or Samsung Notes, or you can use something like Notion if you really wanna get fancy, but really don't overcomplicate it. Just pick like one thing. And again, I always recommend Google Docs, but um, it can be whatever system you are used to. So if I were to build out a template for my video scripts, I might start with something like the hook and put most of my time into formulating that because you want to quickly grab the attention of the viewer, but just for right now, leave a space for hook and then follow that up with a space for an introduction if there's something that you always wanna say to your viewers in every video. This is a good time to introduce yourself and introduce the channel, but try not to take too much time doing this. I think if you look at like, you know, the last two, three, four videos that I've done, I've done a similar intro every time, but I've tried to take less time doing it with each subsequent video because I feel like a lot of people might drop off if you don't get to the point of what they clicked on the video to learn. So after the hook and after your introduction, you're gonna get into the content, the body of your video. What is the thing that you are talking about? And within your content, it is wise to place a few calls to action. So a call to action or a CTA might be something like asking your viewers to subscribe or asking them to like the video, or you might point them to a link in the description. You can place these call to actions throughout the video, but make sure that you space them out and only do them after you've already presented some amount of value to the viewer. You might have an opening call to action, a mid-roll call to action, and then a final call to action. And that last one is almost always going to be pointing to the next video in your series, in your playlist, or whichever video you want them to watch next. So create this template once and then copy it every single time you need to make a new one. Copy it at least once to start and then get in there and create your next video but then you have the original and you can keep copying it over and over and over. Now next you want a good thumbnail system. And for this, I, I'm not a graphic designer, but I just prefer to use Canva. I feel like if you play around with it enough times and look at examples of things uh, on YouTube thumbnails for videos that you like, look at thumbnails that you don't like, get into, uh, get into Canva and play around with some of the templates or start from scratch. You can create templates for your videos and you don't have to change a whole lot. Again, if you look at some of the videos on the playlist that this video is a part of, you will see that a lot of them have the same image of me pointing at something and then I change the words. I might have the same little YouTube logo. You can change whatever you want and you can do a custom thumbnail for each and every video, but if you systemize it in some way, that is going to help you be faster for when you need to get to that point. Then we come to an editing system, and this all depends on are you doing your editing yourself or are you outsourcing your editing? If you're doing your editing yourself, I recommend choosing a platform to do it on, and that could be your computer, that could be your laptop, that could be your tablet, or that could be your phone. And if you are very busy and you do have lots of pockets of time in your day, you might want to choose to edit on your phone. A lot of these smartphones are very capable of editing high quality 1080p HD or even 4K video and outputting something that is really great. You just need to put the time in to do it. If you're editing yourself, you might find that one video takes you hours and hours and hours, especially the more customizations and editing you want to put into it. So systemize that. Just searching YouTube for how to edit on and then plug in the name of the app that you wanna use. I use CapCut again, so how to edit on CapCut. You will find a good system in place and it might start with something like um, take your A-roll footage, 
start with that, work backwards and trim out all the parts that you don't want. And then the next thing would be to, you know, maybe add some text and titles. And the next thing would be to add some transitions and zooms. And the next thing would be to add some B-roll footage that overlays over top of the A-roll and so on and so forth. You know, the last thing that you're gonna do is add audio, um, background music, that kind of thing. So there's an order to these things. And if you keep the order and keep the system in mind, the more you do it, the more repetitions you have, the faster you will become. And if you're going to outsource your editing with someone on Fiverr, I would recommend trying out a couple people. And when you find one that you like, stick with that person, get an idea for what their turnaround time is and keep that in mind when you're planning when you're going to film and when you want that video to actually get out. Because although they will do the editing for you, you do have to wait some amount of time, might be a couple days, depends on who you hire. And having a standard template for your descriptions that includes most of the things you want to include in every video, you can copy that into each video and of course customize and tweak it. Again, I'll have this as part of my overall video template in a Google Doc that I copy uh, over and over and over again for each video and I go in and tweak it for the specific video to include links to relevant things that we talked about um, or maybe take out things that weren't and then of course customize the very beginning of it so that that is keyword relevant to the video. And you stayed till the end of the video, so I wanna give you a few extra, extra good tips. Not just one, not just two, but three. Tip number one is use your calendar, okay? So if it isn't written, it isn't real. When are you actually going to block out time to do the most important things that are the most time intensive for your YouTube channel? If you're getting all of these other things done in the pockets of time, you still need a few dedicated blocks for things like filming. So break out that calendar, look at your week ahead, and actually schedule some time to do the thing. Tip number two is going to be batch record, all right? If you get these systems in place, you might actually have the ideas for two or three or four videos all at one time. And if you block out enough time, you might be able to record all of them. You can edit them separately, and space them out, which is leading into tip number three, which is schedule out your videos. So let's say you plan to record four videos at once and then you went ahead and did the batch recording. Once they're all edited and completed, you don't actually have to drop them on YouTube all at once, although you totally can, but at the same time, you can drop one right away and you can schedule out each subsequent video to, to go twice a week or once a week or whatever you want your cadence to be on YouTube in order to stay consistent. Now, if you thought all of that was helpful, please do not forget to subscribe and you are not going to want to miss what I have for you right here.